Hey, Carly, listen to this. Today, I'm going to be officially filing my marriage registration. What? You're getting married? This is a sudden thing to just drop on me. Yeah, a bit under a year ago I went to a party for former honor students, and I met the woman of my dreams there. She's beautiful, she's kind, she's just all around wonderful. We saw each other for a while, and we quickly decided to get married. Jake. Don't you think it would be better to at least introduce her to the rest of the family first? Even if it's not to me or your other siblings, just at least to mom and dad. It's more than a little starling to just suddenly hear that you're getting married out of nowhere. Nah, you don't need to worry so much about it. It's all going to be fine. I mean, even if I introduced her to all of you, it's not like you would have any reason to oppose the marriage to begin with. So, even if the order is a bit backwards, there shouldn't be a problem. Well, yes, it's true that we normally wouldn't just trade up oppose your marriage, but still. That doesn't change that we're all worried about you, so wouldn't it be better if we actually got to know this woman before she's just suddenly a part of the family? I'm telling you, it's all going to be fine. There's nothing to worry about. Seriously, my wife is just the greatest person you'll ever meet, I promise. She's cute, she's got an amazing sense of style, and she's even graduated from an Ivy League school. Seriously, I don't think you've ever seen such a perfect woman before in your whole life. Oh, yeah, I should also mention that she's the same age as me. Wow, you certainly seem to have fallen hard for her, huh? Well, yeah, I wouldn't have married her otherwise. It's not like I just marry some random woman off the street. Get this, she even quit this amazing job at a huge corporation to marry me. She said that all she wanted to do was support me in life instead. Seriously, there's just no one else in the world like her. So, you're telling me that she went from being a worker with a good salary to a stay-at-home housewife? For her to give up a high-paying job to just support you? She's nothing if not devoted, at least. That's what I'm trying. She's really great. I'm sure you would like her. I really do want to introduce you to her, so let's try to find a time we can meet up and have dinner someplace or something. Yeah, sure, I can do that. Let me check my schedule for the coming few weeks, and I'll get back to you about a time that works for me. Do you have any time in the near future that you'd be open? What sounds good to you? I'm always free, so I'm fine with whenever. You can decide where we go and when, I can work around it. Ha, huh, you're always free, you say? That doesn't sound right. It's one of the busiest times of the year right now, isn't it? Aren't you busy with plenty of work to do yourself? Nah, it's not busy at all. If you work smarter like I do, it's easy to leave on time every day. Work smarter? Are you sure you don't mean you're just trying to get other people to do your work for you? Hey, what are you trying to say? Don't go implying I'm not a hard worker myself. Just, this is all part of the process of training new employees anyway. What do you mean? Well, for any new hire, what matters more is the quantity of work they do, not the quality. To them, it's important to keep having work to do. So, regardless of what kind of work it is we have to keep giving them stuff to do. All I'm doing is taking part in the whole process, nothing more. It's practically a tradition. Anyway, you can feel free to set up the schedule yourself, okay? I know I said you can decide both earlier, but on second thought, let me handle the restaurant. You just set up a time that works for you and I can make the reservation. The next day. Hello, it's good to finally get to talk to you. I'm Mindy, Jake's newly married wife. You're his older sister Carly, right? Yes, that's right. I'm Carly. It's good to finally get to talk with you. Now that I finally have a chance to say it, congratulations on getting married. I heard about it all from Jake. He clearly thinks the world of you. Yeah, I'm sorry about how I'm only now talking with you after we've already gotten married. The order is all backwards, isn't it? When I told him that I wanted to get married sooner rather than later, he just took that to the extreme. 
Honestly, I feel like he was going too fast, even for me. I tried to stop him for a while, but he just pushed ahead with spilling out the forms, saying it'd all be fine. Sorry, my little brother tends to go a bit overboard from time to time. That's just how he is, though. Ever since we were kids he was the kind of person who'd rush headlong into something without a second thought. But regardless, I'm looking forward to finally meeting you in person. I'm still trying to get the schedule together, so I'm not sure exactly when it's going to happen yet. But I hope you're looking forward to it too. Well, about that. I actually reached out to you today because I needed to talk to you about that. Do you have a second? Yeah, I've got a bit of time. If we can keep it short, I should be fine. Is there something you wanted to ask about regarding the dinner party? Well, I heard from Jake that you're still trying to figure out the schedule. But you really don't need to go through all that effort to plan everything out. Don't go pushing yourself too hard and stressing yourself out over it. After all, I don't really have any intention on meeting you in person to begin with. I'm sorry, what? Well, to be specific, I'm not talking about just this dinner party. I more mean that I don't ever intend to meet you at all. So, you really don't need to go through all the trouble of scheduling everything. Well, why not? I mean, it's not like I'm trying to say something about your marriage or anything. I don't have any objections to the two of you being together. All I wanted was to see my brother's wife myself once, that's all. Just a meet and greet, nothing more. Why are you so against seeing me? Well. You see, I don't really want to have anything to do with someone as slowly as you. Well, academically, at least. Excuse me. I heard it all from Jake. You dropped out of high school, didn't you? You never went back to graduate, either. In other words, you're so insufficiently educated that you don't even have a high school diploma, am I wrong? Well, yes, that's true. I never graduated from high school. At the time, as I was midway through my senior year, our family business went bankrupt, so I had to help make ends meet. Jake didn't have that problem, since he was so much younger than me. By the time he was graduating from high school, our situation had settled down. Unfortunately, I didn't have the chance to go back and finish things up, since my days were busy with work. I didn't need the diploma anyway. I sympathize with the circumstances, but in the end, a high school dropout is still a high school dropout. Meeting an idiot that never even graduated isn't exactly something I really want to do. A meeting like that is completely meaningless. After all, I absolutely hate idiots and people who couldn't even put in the effort to finish high school. Are you serious? For claiming you, sympathize, with my situation, you certainly sound like you feel quite the opposite. What do you think? Remember, someone's income is proportional to their academic record, don't you know that? So, for a dropout like you, I imagine you're practically destitute, huh? I, on the other hand, not only graduated from an Ivy League school, but up until I got married I was working at a Fortune 500 company. I think it should be obvious that you and I live in completely different worlds. Different worlds, you say? Yes, exactly. I am on a completely different level of society that you can never hope to achieve with your pathetic lack of a proper education. So, I feel like it would be better if I didn't involve myself with someone as poor as yourself. That's why you don't need to bother with trying to set up a dinner party. I can't imagine what you would even consider, dinner party, to begin with. And while we're at it, I'd prefer if you didn't try to become overly familiar with me. I imagine you would want to having gotten a far superior sister-in-law. But I can't say I have any interest in you, so I'd prefer if you stayed out of my life. Are you sure you're fine with this? I mean, I am still your husband's sister. You're really okay with just not meeting your husband's family at all? Yes, I'm sure. All I did was marry Jane, nothing more. It's not like I did it so I could get to know some poor people who aren't even worth my time. I mean, it's not like I'm opposed to meeting some of the family. I've got no problem meeting his parents, for example. So you're saying that you don't need to meet his sister, just his parents? Yes, that's exactly right. I mean why bother? 
From what I hear, it sounds like you are the exact same clothes every day, right? Well, technically, I'm simply wearing the same outfit because I have multiple sets of that same outfit. It's a little embarrassing, but I've always had a bit of an admiration for Steve Jobs, so, I kinda wanted to imitate his style a bit, that's all. I don't need to hear some pointless excuses, no matter how silly or shampoo they might be. That's not going to make me believe anything different. The only reason that someone would have lots of sets of the same clothes would be because they were trying to take advantage of a sale to save money. That's all you were doing, am I wrong? It must be so hard to have so little disposable income that you have to resort to such methods. I'm surprised you're not just out begging on the street. How can you even have a job at all? Okay, so let me just check something with you. You haven't heard a thing about my job from Jake, have you? You haven't asked him, and he hasn't said a thing about it. Like there's any point in hearing about the kind of work some dropout does for a living? I mean, it's not like someone like that could have the aptitude to work a remotely reputable job. So, I can't say I really have any interest whatsoever in whatever silly little job you have, so of course I haven't asked him. Oh, is that so? Yes, quite. Anyway, to put it simply, please just cancel any plans you were making for whatever this pathetic dinner party was going to end up being. I'll be sure to explain it all to Jake too, so no need to worry. I won't say anything that'll embarrass you either. I mean, with how poor you are, you can't possibly have any time to spare anyway. You shouldn't worry about putting yourself out when you don't have the means. Anyway, goodbye. One month later. Jake, where are you right now? What is it now, Carly? I'm out of state right now on a business trip. I'm busy, so stop calling me in the middle of the workday. Oh, you're on a business trip, then. Well, what's this business trip for? Who are you meeting? What's your schedule? Huh. If you can't give me a satisfactory explanation, I'm going to need you to come back to the office immediately. Got it. Immediately. I'm telling you to hurry up and return to the office. What? But that's completely impossible. I told you already that I'm on a business trip. What's with all the questioning all of a sudden? This trip is going to be until the start of next week. There's still a week to go before everything's finished up. I can't possibly come back to the office that quickly. Anyway, I'm busy. Stop contacting me, okay? 30 minutes later. Come on, enough already, Carly. Haven't you been annoying enough? Can you please just stop trying to interrupt our honeymoon? We've gone through so much effort to get everything planned out. Your honeymoon? Yes, our honeymoon. Even a dropout like you should understand what that word means, right? We're going to be spending a wonderful week together in Hawaii. But no, you just have to be constantly texting him and calling him, being nothing but a pest. Stop being so persistent and leave us alone. Well what did you expect me to do? He wasn't answering my texts or my calls. What else could I have done? But don't fret about it anymore. It's all fine now. Do you think you could give Jake the phone? There's something very important I need to talk with him about. Oh, sure. You claim it's very important, but all you really want to do is be a nuisance to us, right? I mean... I get why you're so jealous, but can you stop antagonizing us already? Ha, huh, jealous. Yes, jealous. I mean, you're obviously very jealous that Jake and I get to go on this fancy honeymoon, aren't you? With how you're both poor ADN single, you have no real hope of ever getting to go on a honeymoon like this one, after all. I bet you're so jealous that your brother and his wife were living such a happy life together that you're just brimming with. Hatred? Am I wrong? I mean, I can't think of any other reason why you would go so far as to pester us like this. I'd appreciate it if you would stop for a moment. You've got the wrong idea here. I had no intention of doing any such thing. Oh, is that so? Ugh, this is exactly why I hate stupid dropouts like you. 
You all just do nothing but be jealous of other people, and live off of handouts from others, living the absolute worst kind of life possible. Honestly, when we compare you to someone absolutely amazing like me with my stellar academic record, the vast difference between us is just too obvious. Oh, is it now? This might be a good time, actually. There's actually something I wanted to say to you, Carly. I'd like it if you never spoke with either of us ever again. To put it another way, I'd like you to cut all ties with us, Jake and me both. Do you realize what you're asking here? Yes, I'm asking for you to never give me the misfortune of having to see your pathetic, filthy, destitute face. Sure, your parents may have lost their business all those years ago. But they still manage to pull themselves up and are living quite luxuriously now, right? And Jake managed to climb the ladder so far as to be a department lead. Having done that much only in his 20s, he's got a bright future ahead as well. I mean, compared to everyone else's age, he is just miles ahead. He's really just the perfect husband. But then there's you, Carly, the high school dropout is practically destitute. There's not a single good reason for anyone to ever associate themselves with you, you know? Not a single good reason, huh? So that's why you want to completely cut ties with me, is that it? Yes, that's right. I'll be sure to explain everything thoroughly to Jake. So, please, just have your own destitute life and don't contact your brother ever again. Okay, sure. I'll be sure to fire him. Huh? Yeah. I'll be sure to put in the paperwork for his dismissal as punishment for his actions. There's plenty of evidence and reasons to fire him, so there shouldn't be any problems with doing so. With that, I'll cut off every single remaining connection I have with him. Happy? No, I can't say I understand what you're talking about here. What do you mean, you're going to fire him? Would you of all people be able to decide to fire him? Oh, that, that's simple. It's because I'm the president of the company that Jake's working for. You're what now? The president. You know what that word means, right? I was letting Jake work here as a favor to him. He's been getting support from my parents and me for a long time now. His reaching high school graduation, his college education, those were all thanks to the help of my parents and me. And yet, despite all that, when he went job hunting, he just couldn't land a position anywhere. No company would employ him. After a year of failure, he begged our parents for help. Only then did we decide to let him have a job at my company. Wait, wait, hold on. Your company? What? You're telling me that you, a high school dropout, are managing a company? Well, yes. It's not like you have to have a college degree to start a company or anything. During the time I was helping my parents out when their business went bankrupt, I picked up a lot from them. Thankfully, when I started my own business it managed to flourish dramatically. If I remember correctly, our revenue last year was around $3 million or so. Your revenue has reached $3 million. Anyway, Jake started off working hard, but, as the company grew, his work ethic just got worse and worse. Eventually, he started trying to order others around, acting like he had some influence because he was the little brother of the president. So, as a measure to get him to stop getting in the way of other employees, I went so far as to make an entire division of the company composed of him alone. No way, you're lying. You're saying that he got to be a deficient lead at such a young age because of that. Because a division was specifically made for him. Well, I was hoping that by doing so he would become keenly aware of how troublesome he really is. Unfortunately, in a move that shouldn't even surprise me anymore, he didn't reflect at all and just continued doing as he pleased. Did you know that he applied for funding from the company for this honeymoon of yours? By calling it a business trip, he did what? Even if it's someone as worthless as him, during the busy season we need as many people in the office as possible. And yet he thinks that it would be normal for us to accept a week-long business trip. There's no way we would approve of funding such a thing. When I confronted him about it, he kept insisting that he was on a business trip. Thankfully, you were nice enough to explain the truth of the matter. You really helped me out there, thanks. Huh. Well, Jake has reached his limit with me. 
both as a president and as a sister. So, since I'll be firing him shortly, it should be pretty easy to cut all ties with him just like you asked. By all means, please enjoy your honeymoon to your heart's content. Just remember that Jake won't have a job waiting for him when you both get back. Immediately afterward. Hey, don't joke around, Carly. I just heard it from Mindy. What do you mean, you're firing me? What, sir I just skipped out on work a little and you go that far? That's way too harsh, don't you think? Oh, a little, you say? I don't think you even know what, a little, even means. You lied to the company, applying for funding for a supposed business trip. And I find out that it's for your honeymoon of all things. You have gotten way too carried away with underestimating what I'll do. You can't just take advantage of my company because you're my brother. Yes, yes, I get it. Look, I realized that I went too far, and I'm going to learn from my mistake. So please, just don't fire me like this. I am not going to cover for you anymore. I can't cover for you. Remember those new hires you were talking about? Remember how you said you were just throwing work at them? They've got recordings of how you've been treating them every day. I've got hard evidence of what you've been doing. With that proof of your lackadaisical attitude towards your work along with this false business trip request of yours, I've got plenty of reasons to fire you. What? This can't be real, those damn newbies. Do they think they really can just stab me in the back like this? Don't try to put this on them. You wasting your potential and getting yourself fired is your fault, and yours alone. I can't believe you decided to not even fulfill the most basic responsibilities of your job. You just left everything for new hires from other divisions to deal with. With that, you can't even be called an employee of the company anymore. You're nothing but a burden, a liability. Wait, hold on, Carly. How could you say such terrible things to me like that? I just got married, for the sake of me and my wife, I need money. And yet, to suddenly be without a job so soon after getting married. This is no laughing matter. I'll turn over a new leaf, I'll work hard, I promise. Just please don't fire me. I believe I've taken the most suitable action as the president of the company. I'll be sure to have your desk cleared out by the end of the day. No way. Oh, and the one who told me to start cutting ties with you. It was your wife. All I'm doing is obeying her request. What? What are you saying? What did Mindy say to you? Why don't you ask her yourself? She's right next to you, isn't she? Anyway, I'm quite busy at the moment, so this is where I will say goodbye. I don't need any souvenirs from your trip or anything, so please just enjoy it to the fullest. One week later. Carly, please think it over. We'll do our best to re-establish a connection with you. We won't just shut you out of our lives anymore. So please, just like Jake have his old job back. The two of us were already in the process of buying a new house when he lost his job. Oh, is that so? But now things have ended up in complete shambles. Why would you do this to your own brother? He's really a spectacular businessman, you know. You're missing out by not employing him. When he really buckles down and gets to it, I'm sure he will show you just how much of an asset he is to your company. Oh. So he's a spectacular businessman, then. Well, I'm just a lowly high school dropout, right? What would I know? I think that instead of working for someone as stupid as me, he would do much better if he worked at some other company instead, don't you? Wait, just hold on. Then, how about if I took his place? What if you employed me instead of him? Ha! Huh. You, at my company? Yes. Remember, I did graduate from an Ivy League school. I was top of my class in the business program. I have all sorts of credentials that fit the position and a stellar record to prove it. I even got in thanks to getting a perfect score on my global business prep tests. To have someone who's the very cream of the crop working for you would have to be appealing, wouldn't it? It's a golden opportunity. I'm not so sure. You talk about your test scores, but no Ivy League school has accepted based on global business prep tests in a long time. 
Huh? What I'm saying is that there's no way you got into a prestigious school based on that alone, yet that's the only thing you mentioned. I know Jake took the same test, but since you're both the same age, I know that both of you took it when that test lost any academic influence it had, if any. It's just an independent test that basically means nothing. So how did you even get in? Ah, uh, no. Well, sorry. I guess it was such a long time ago that I don't really remember the specifics very well. All I remember is that I got a perfect score on those tests. Okay then. Well, do you remember anything about your time in this Ivy League school you were making such a big deal about? Could you perhaps give me the name of a professor you felt really taunt you a lot during your time there? Huh? Well, I frequently get requests to give guest lectures at multiple different business schools, so I'm on good relationship terms with a number of different professors. I'm pretty well known for the seminars I run, and see it's always fill up within a day of them being announced, no matter which school I do them at. I don't think it would be an overstatement to say that I'm at least acquainted with nearly every business professor in the Ivy League. What? You are? So, I just figured I'd ask about if you really are a graduate of one of those schools or not. If you really are a stellar of a student as you say you are, I figure there must be a professor who remembers you. Well, here's the thing. You see. Oh, are you telling me that even for a simple question like this, you can't seem to remember? Even after having gone to college for four years, you can't come up with a single professor who you felt was important to you. Or, perhaps it would be more reasonable to assume you haven't actually graduated from one of those schools at all. You have no idea what you mean. What are you insinuating? Well, I heard from Jake that he met you at a party that was just for honor students. I'm guessing he meant people with a stellar academic record, as you put it. With all of the things I've been learning about you, it wouldn't surprise me if you say falsified your academic records so you could sneak into that party. No, I, I wouldn't call it that, maybe just exaggerated it a little, nothing serious. Before you even think about formally applying to my company, I highly recommend confirming some of your details first. I don't think it would be good if you happen to also be falsifying certain other things about yourself as well, for example. What? What do you mean? Well, Apart from your academic record, you could be lying about something like your age. Oh yes, there is also no real certainty as to whether or not you actually have a good work history, is there? We would need to check that as well. Wait, please, wait. You don't really think that there's any need to dig that deep, is there? Why bother judging up ancient history? I mean, it's not like the past me would be the one working for you, the present me will. The current me is truly world class, so it doesn't matter what my past was like, in school or work. You know what I mean, right? Right? Well, yes, actually, I think that's right. However, you know, there are still lots of people in the world who judge others solely based on their academic achievements. Rest assured, if I'm going to be hiring someone, I will be sure to do a thorough background check. A thorough background check? Anyway. I'll get back to you regarding the results of our background check and due course. I'll be expecting to see a truly spectacular report from this investigation, after all. After that. And sir, the investigation into Mindy's background began. I ended up finding out that not only was her academic history fake, but so was her work history and even her age. All she had really done after graduating high school was do basic clerical work at a small company in her hometown. Two years ago, she moved to a much larger city with the sole goal of marrying into money. To further that goal, she started trying to look around for someone who might help her make a fake background for her that would be more appealing. As it turns out, she's actually five years older than Jake. Speaking of him, it sounds like he doesn't actually care about what kind of person she really is. He said that it was his duty to make her happy now that they were married. So, he doesn't have any plans to divorce her. Some might call that dedication admirable, others might call it stupid. All I know is that the two of them don't have jobs, and are completely broke. From what I heard, it sounds like they took out a loan so they could live at some cheap apartment somewhere, 
and are trying to make the best of it.